All right, so we're going to make this uh, make this guitar. So this is probably going to end up being like a multi-part tutorial series because this is a fairly complicated object. So let's get going. So I have this reference image here. Uh, I will paste a link in the description so that you can you can sort of follow along. It is you know just uh, just sort of a, a front view of a guitar. Any front view will work. You don't have to use this one. You can really use any one, but make sure that you grab a reference image so that you're not just sort of working freehand. And what I'm going to do is actually the way that I added this is I went to and let me turn on screencast keys because so I know that's helpful for some of you. Here we go shift A image images as planes and that's just an add-on if you don't have it. Uh, just go into your preferences and, and enable it. It's uh, it's just called images as planes. And we'll go into the guitar folder here that I made and grab this reference image. So the next thing that I did was I grabbed this and I just I just rotated it minus 90 degrees. Uh, and up here, if you click this little filter icon, you can turn on this selectable. Um, I changed my startup file because you will want to use this if you're using reference images. So I can just disable it here and now that's no longer selectable. So we can work over top of it. Uh, before I do that, actually, though, I'm just going to click on it and drag it very slightly backwards in the y-axis so that I can you know, put ob objects over top of it uh, and it won't clip through. All right, so Shift A, I'm going to add a mesh plane and then RX 90 to rotate it, 90 degrees in the x-axis, and then just scale it down. And I'm going to place this, actually I'm going to move I'm going to move it sort of into the center here of this. And then I'm going to go into edit mode and just grab in vertex mode up here. Just grab these bottom two verts and just G, oops, GZ to drag them down to the bottom of this, the bottom of this guitar here. And then going to control R to add a loop cut down the center of this and escape so it just or right click so that it just stays in the in the, in the center and then I'm just going to delete these two verts here on the right side and I'm doing that so that we can we can mirror this object so tab to go back into object mode and then down here on the right in the modifiers panel I'm just going to add a mirror modifier in turn on clipping so it's currently mirrored in the x-axis that's fine and then i should see if we select these two verts here in the middle that these are sort of stuck together here in the middle all right so i'm going to grab this object here and now just tab to go back into edit mode and Control r to add loop cuts and i'm going to scroll up with the mouse wheel to add a decent number of loop cuts it doesn't have to be anything crazy let's just add uh I'm going to add eight. That's probably more than we need for this, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to start grabbing these verts here on the left-hand side. I'm going to just select them and GX to drag in the x-axis and just start moving them over to sort of line up with the shape of this guitar. All right, so we'll just go all the way down. And now I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And in your modifiers panel, just make sure that when you add this, that it's below the mirror modifier. Otherwise, you'll get this hole in the center here. And I'm just going to leave it at one for now. And I'm going to start dragging these points out here on the left out until this line uh, sort of matches up with the outline of our, of our reference image. So we'll just... So drag these out like this. And I'm trying to keep the I'm trying to keep the distance between all of these uh, all of these loop cuts going horizontally here pretty consistent. Uh, just because if you say for example if I were to grab one of these and put it up so it's really close like this to one of the other ones. Um, when we subdivide this, that's gonna give us more dense topology in that in that area, uh, which we don't want. Um, so just try to be mindful that uh, that as you do this, uh, this is going to affect the way that the topology of this object looks 
you know, at a later stage once it starts to get more dense. And so it's a good idea always just to try and keep everything fairly uniform. You want pretty even faces along your object. So I'm just going to keep sort of manipulating these into you know, roughly the right shape. It does not have to be perfect, um, but we can just sort of drag these out like this. And actually, I'm going to turn the levels of, loop, of uh, subdivision here on the subsurf modifier here in the levels viewport up to two, um, just so it's a little bit more dense topology because we are still getting some fairly jagged corners here. You can always subdivide more, uh, but it's more of a pain in the ass to unsubdivide, uh, especially if you have a fairly complex complex object. So uh, I try to keep it as low as I can with the intent that if we need to subdivide it more, we can do it at a later stage. And I'm just going to try and get these as close as I can. And that's good. So now I'm going to apply the mirror modifier and then apply the subsurf modifier. And you can see that we get we get this, which is this sort of nice uh, object with some some pretty okay looking looking topology. All right, perfect. So now we're running into an issue here because uh, here, if I turn, if I hide this for a second, we want to be able to cut like a sound hole in this because we need to we need to be able to uh, you know create the create the sound hole. So I'm going to stay in viewport shading mode here and just select our soundboard here and. Under materials, I'm going to click the plus to create a new material slot, and then new to create a new material, and I'm just going to call it soundboard. Oh, and actually, I already have a soundboard material in here from earlier uh, when I was testing this out. So if I scroll down here, you can see that we have alpha, and I'm just going to lower that to like 0.5 or so, and then under viewport display, set the blend mode to alpha blend and that will just make this sort of semi-transparent so that we can we can see through to our reference image for the moment if you're working with images as planes uh, that's a really useful thing to know how to do in order to to be able to see your uh, your reference image while also being able to view the material that you're working on so one other thing that i should have mentioned at this stage because um, I forgot to do it in mine, so make sure that you do this, uh, is to create a duplicate of the object before cutting the sound hole, because uh, we are going to need it later. We haven't gotten to that stage yet, um, but I realized as soon as I did this that we will need uh, a duplicate of this when we get to a later stage of this build. So you can do that just by clicking it uh, and hitting Shift-D, and that will create a duplicate of your object. And you can just hide it uh, in, the, in the scene collection, that way uh, it's out of the way and you'll have it for later on when we actually uh, require it. So I'm going to select a bunch of faces that are over top of the sound hole here, and then I'm going to X and delete faces. And then I'm going to Alt-click to select this whole edge loop around this hole. And then actually there's a neat thing that you can do. If you go into Edit Preferences, uh, you just need to make sure that you have the loop tools add-on enabled for this. And if you don't, just go into add-ons, uh, search for loop tools, and then just, just turn it on here. And then with this edge loop selected, just right-click, loop tools, circle. And then you'll see that it'll turn those words into a circle, which is pretty handy. And then I'm going to hit S to scale, and I'm going to scale it down a little bit like that. Now I'm just going to edge slide a few of these edges a little further away again and just scale this roughly here. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Um, but the reason that I'm doing this is because, so the way that our edge flow is currently on this object, we have this circle here in the center of our mesh. And if I try to add a loop cut here, uh, this is not going to work. It's going to go like all the way down the object. And we want to be able to add loop cuts around this circle here uh, because we need to add the hole for the for sort of the sound hole that's in the center of the this soundboard here but then we also need to add some decorative features because guitars usually have in order to sort of clean up the soundboard and make it look a little bit better there's usually a rosette around it uh, and sometimes it's made of like herringbone purfling or it's made of uh, you know just plastic binding 
but in order to in order to add that we need to be able to add circular loop cuts around that sound hole so in order to do that what i'm going to do is alt click to select this whole circle around the soundboard here and i'm just scaling it so that it's larger than the sound hole itself uh, and then we'll add we'll be able to add loop cuts inside of that so i'm going to hit f to fill this in with a face and then i to inset and that's going to create this other loop on the inside here and i'm going to scale that down that inner circle down to the size of the sound hole and then i'm just going to go into face select mode x delete faces and so now we have the topology that we want for this essentially we have the soundboard which is you know made of these quads so it's an entirely quad based mesh we have the sound hole in the center and it is surrounded by a face loop which is what we want so that's going to give us that's going to give us the look that we're that we're after here and on this material I'm going to bring in our first texture. So I'll put a link in the description for the textures that we're, that we're using for this project, because uh, I'm gonna make sure that all of the textures are ones that are freely available that you can access. And this first one is from textures.com, which I like a lot. So let's go to our object. And actually I'm just gonna hide the reference image for a second. And let's grab our texture. So you can add a texture to the project by simply dragging and dropping it from the folder where you have it located on your computer into the into the shader graph. So I'm going to do that. So I have it here, and I'm just going to, oops, that's not it. Drag and drop, and it's this it's this wood texture here. And now to make our soundboard material, I'm simply going to drag and drop the color channel into the base color, and you can see that it's it's applying this here. Now you'll notice right away that it doesn't look correct. And the reason is that we haven't UV unwrapped this object. So if I go into um, the UV editing window and where's our object, here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna click on the object and before UV unwrapping, make sure that the scale is applied. So I'm gonna hit space, apply rotation and scale and then tab to enter edit mode, A to select all, U to unwrap, and then unwrap. Now we don't have any seams in this object because this is essentially just a flat plane currently. We don't actually need any seams in order to lay it out flat. Uh, but when we, when we make this into you know, the whole 3D object, we will have to add some seams in order to unwrap this object. But for now, uh, we don't have to quite yet. So we will, we will do that when we, when we get there. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's unwrapped sideways. Um, so over here on the left panel under the UV editing window, I'm just gonna select some verts here. And if you hit Control L, it will select all of the verts that are linked to that UV island. And I'm gonna type R minus 90 to rotate it, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then G to drag and just position it in the, in the center of this. There we go. And sorry, I know the uh, the screencast keys add-on doesn't work in this window. I'm not sure why. I just I can't get it to I can't get it to work. It's uh it's very broken. So I will try to keep it enabled whenever I can. Here we go. It works on this side only. All right. So we have our UVs for this object. It's been unwrapped. Uh, it has the material on it, but the material is obviously too large. Now. In the UV editing window here, you can see it's taking up most of the, the texture space here. And uh, a couple of times I've seen people go like, select the whole thing and just make this larger, right? And, and that will make the texture smaller on the object. Uh, but I don't suggest doing that just because if you ever wanna bake textures with this object, then it's important that the UVs, uh, that the UV map be contained within the texture space here. So like this is a 1K texture. If you wanted to bake a 1K, tex 1K texture from this uh, and your UVs were scaled up like this, then the texture that you bake will, will not work because it's, it's essentially running out of space. You wouldn't be able to bake a 1K texture from that UV layout. So try to keep it within the space that you have here if you want to bake textures. Um, I'm not gonna be baking any textures here. 
Uh, it's not necessary for this project, but it will. Uh, it's always good. It's good practice just to get used to doing that, just so that you know your models uh, are unwrapped in a way that if somebody wanted to, like if you were passing it off to someone else to work on and they wanted to bake textures, uh, that they could do that. So instead, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the texture mapping to control the size of this. So in the shading tab up here, we're going to click on our object and make sure that we're editing this soundboard material. And then uh, it's actually another useful add-on to make sure that you have installed is if you go into your preferences, you want to make sure that you have the Node Wrangler turned on as well. That's a, another useful add-on to have. And if you do have that turned on, when you select a texture, you can just hit Control-T and that will add this texture coordinate node and mapping node automatically. Uh, you can just add them by Shift-A and then searching for them. Uh, but this is just a lot faster. So on this mapping node, I'm going to change the type from point to texture because this is for this is for a texture. Uh, and if you don't do that, then your scale values here will be inverted. So if I currently if I lower this, it gets oops. If I lower this, it gets smaller. Uh, if you don't switch it to texture, if you lower it, it'll get larger. So it's not a big deal, but something that you should be aware of. And I'm going to change the scale of this to something like. 0.15, something like that is, or point, maybe point, point 0.2 is probably okay for something like this. So let's add some uh, some rings for this uh, for this rosette. So we're going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and Control R to add loop cuts, and I'm just going to add two of them in the center of this. And let's go ahead and make a new material here. We'll make a go to the material properties and then hit the little plus to make a new material slot and then click new to make a new material and we're going to call this we're going to call this binding um, and guitars have binding you know all over the place uh, I'm going to just for now give this a black color and I'm going to turn the roughness down to like 0.35 something like that uh, and we can come back and refine this later because uh, we still have a lot of work to do on this on this instrument. Uh, oh, and screencast keys is turned off again. It's working. Here we go. So into face mode, and then I'll click on one of these edges to select this face loop. And then I'm just going to hit with the binding selected here in the material properties panel, hit assign, and that will assign that second material to uh, to our our rosette area. Now they usually have. Um, it depends on on the instrument, but in the in the example that we're working on, there is uh, a little bit more detail than this. There's sort of the the central rosette, and then there's like two smaller rings on the outside. So let's add those. We're going to hide the reference image again here, and on the on the front of the object here, uh, on the inside of this, I'm just going to Control R to add uh, two more loop cuts and on the outside as well. And then I'll just go in here and grab one of these edges and just double tap, double tap G. So I'm alt clicking to select this whole edge loop and then GG to edge slide it and drag it. So that's a, a little bit smaller. And we'll do the same thing with this one here on the outside. And then back into face mode to select this face loop. And alt shift click to do the same thing on this face loop and then hit assign to assign those. And if we want to adjust the sizes of these rings at a later point, uh, we can do that. But at least now this is this is sort of um, in place so that we can come back and adjust it later if we have to. Now there's only one more thing uh, I'm going to do here before wrapping this video up, and that is I'm going to go into edit mode again. And on the outside, let's actually look at the reference image. You can sort of see it on the outside of most guitars they have like a binding that sort of surrounds the whole soundboard it's this uh, you know it's this this edge here on the outside and that's usually made of it depends on the instrument but it's usually made of black plastic or black layers of black and white plastic uh, it's called purfling or binding uh, so we're gonna add some binding to this on the outside as well and to do that um, let's go into edit mode and if I just select everything uh, I can't actually inset this without sort of adding more geometry to the center as well. Uh, so, I mean, I, I can show you if I hit 
I, what will happen is it's, it's adding an extra loop cut. It might be a little hard to see here, but on the inside of this, which we don't want. Uh, so to prevent that, what we can do is just alt click to select this, uh, oops, into edge mode and alt click to select this innermost edge loop here and then F to fill this. And now if we hit A to select all and I to inset, we can add an edge loop here all the way around the outside of the object, which is what we want because that's gonna give us, again, uh, you know, the topology that we need for something like this. So we have our uh, nice ring in the center and we have a nice edge loop around the outside of the object as well, which is gonna give us the edge flow that we need to add the binding. So now with that done, can we go back into face mode and just reselect this interface and press X and delete faces. And then here on this, on this uh, binding on the outside, I'm actually gonna just alt click to select that whole, that whole face loop, select binding here in the materials property panel and hit assign. And now you can see that we have that binding on the outside. Uh, it is a little bit large, and the reason for that is because I still have this subsurf modifier applied. And if I were to hide that, you would see that it is only being applied to that area. Uh, but if we wanted to shorten that or restrict it, make it a little bit smaller, uh, there are a couple things we can do. One, we can alt-click this inner edge loop here, the one we just added by insetting, and GG to edge slide, and just bring this closer to the edge. And then the other thing we can do is uh, alt R to add, oops, yeah, alt R, uh, control R rather, to add a loop cut on the inside of this all the way around and bring it really close to that, that inner ring here and then go into face mode again, select this inner face loop here and go into the material properties, select soundboard and hit assign. And so now we have, uh, we have sort of two edge loops around the entirety of the object. And so the innermost one is still the soundboard material and that's sort of holding uh, that proximity loop. It's acting as a proximity loop to hold the geometry in place there so that the outermost one doesn't get stretched inward when the subsurf modifier is applied. So I will actually do one more thing here, uh, which is I'm gonna, with the soundboard material selected here in the material properties, I'm gonna click on the shading tab and let's just do a quick render of this before we finish up. Now the principal BSDF shader uh, actually has a clear coat function on it. So if you wanted to make a shiny material, uh, one of the things that you could do is like to turn the roughness all the way down. And that's how you would make, you know, shiny materials on, uh, um, if you wanted to make like a shiny plastic or something. Uh, but in this case, um, guitars do actually have a clear coat. There's not a lot of things that actually have a clear coat on them. Uh, like granite sometimes, if you have a granite countertop or like uh, wood with varnish on it, uh, but not a ton of stuff. Uh, but in this case, it is one thing that can actually use a clear coat. So I'm just gonna go down here in the principal BSDF and turn the clear coat all the way up to one. And that's all I'm gonna do. So let's render this out quickly and uh, see how it looks. So to do that, in case you, you uh, are new to this, which this tutorials may be a little advanced for uh, someone who doesn't know how to use the camera settings yet, but just in case, uh, we'll go to the render properties here and make sure that the render engine is set to cycles. Uh, if you're using the new Blender, uh, which is 3.0 or 3.01, then you wanna make sure as well that in your sample settings uh, that these things look okay. So um, this noise threshold is fine. This is uh, a new feature here. Max samples for render uh, 4K is fine. It is a little bit high. I actually gonna turn it down to 1024. Um, but it obviously will only reach that if it if it uh, needs to in order to achieve this low th noise threshold. And then denoising, uh, you wanna use open image denoise, uh, preferably over optics, uh, but I'm actually gonna turn it off because I don't think that we need it right now. Then I'm gonna press, uh, as long as you have a camera in your scene, uh, by default you should. Uh, if you don't, it just hit Shift A and then look in here for camera and add one, uh, but you should have a camera and we're gonna hit uh, N to bring up the properties panel, view, and then turn on this lock camera to view. Then I'm gonna press zero 
which is going to bring us into the camera view. And now, as long as you have this lock camera to view enabled, you can sort of drag the viewport around as we would normally, and that will uh, will sort of set the position of the camera. And then to get out of camera view, just hit zero again. Now I'm also going to add an HDRI, and in order to do this, um, what you can do is go into the uh, into the shading, the shader editor here at the top, and then down here where it says object, click that, and just go down and select world. And we're going to hit shift A down here to add a texture, environment texture, and then plug that color output of the environment texture into the surface output. Now you won't see any difference in the viewport if you have this set to uh, material preview because this uh, is essentially using the EV render with its its own HDRI. Uh, but you can you will notice a difference when you switch to rendered view because then it'll be using the HDRI that you have put in manually essentially. Uh, and so then with this environment texture node here, you can just click open and then go and select an HDRI. Uh, from your computer. I will leave a link in the description to uh, Polyhaven, which was formerly uh, HDRI Haven, and there are a lot of free HDRI files that you can download from there, uh, and that will help you to achieve some, some pretty good looking lighting uh, with minimal effort. So I've got one from my desktop selected here. I'm just going to plug it in, and then uh, let's render this. So I'm going to press F12 to render this image, and let's see how it's looking so far. All right, there we go. So that is our, our soundboard render. Uh, so in the next video, we'll finish building out the rest of the body of this instrument.